Joining us now here on the MMA Report on Radio Influence, and a fighter that's going to be returning to the cage, come up here in Victa FC 18. She's going to be taking on Megan Anderson. It's Peggy Morgan, who is a 4 and 3 in her career, coming off that win against Jesse Miele back at CES MMA 30. Uh, Peggy, as always, appreciate the time. Obviously, uh, we're it's going to be 11 months between fights, so what's been going on with you? Um, we kind of plan to take a little break from Invicta, at least. We're hoping to get more local fights, but we wanted to just, you know, take an opportunity to kind of build some of my skills up and work on some things um, and just, you know, just have fun with it and try to, to grow all around as a fighter instead of always, you know, fighting these hard fights and having to work specific strategies and tactics for, like, each fight. Is it tough to sit there and not take a fight? I mean, obviously, as a fighter, A, you get paid to fight, and B, you constantly want to keep getting in there. Is that is it hard to kind of sit back on the, on the sidelines and, and just work and, and just be in the training room? Yeah, I was definitely – I was getting very frustrated, um, and I was I was repeatedly begging to take fights, but um, my head coach, Simon Dave, was, was pretty strict. And you know, he would have let me fight it, or he would have been – I mean, you can always stop you, but he would have been in favor of me fighting at any point if it had been the right – the right fighter, but I wasn't being offered those opportunities. So, um, yeah, I decided to listen to him just because I knew I wouldn't feel good going into a fight if I didn't think my coach was behind it. What was it frustrating for you to, you know, you know, was it a frustrating period for you or, or do you kind of look at it and say, you know what, this, this really was the best thing for me. It was frustrating, but I also knew it was the best thing. I, I kind of jumped into the deep end really fast and I didn't have the opportunity to, to like really build myself up as an MMA fighter that I, I would have liked to have had. And I th- I mean, a lot of it for me was confidence. Like, I think, I think I probably did have the skills, but I wasn't showing them just because there was like that seed of self doubt. I hadn't been doing it that long. And I kind of gone into like some pretty just competition early. Um, it, it definitely like it stole some of my confidence and we kind of needed to take a little break and build that up. You know, you talk about the, the type of competition you faced early in your career. Is there, do you at all look back at that and say, I wish I wouldn't have taken that route? Or do you look back and say, you know what, by taking that route, it, it allowed me to kind of show what I need to do to take to take my game to the next level? Um, I mean, I think it was really the path that was available to me at that point. There, like, I tried to have more amateur fights than I had. I'd only had two, and they, I just I wasn't getting them. Even cutting down to 135, I'm six foot one, one, and I was fighting as an amateur at 135 pounds just to get fights, even at 135. At that point, or like 2011, I wasn't I wasn't getting matches, so I ended up turning pro. Um, at that point, it was kind of like right before WMMA really broke, and right now it's a lot easier for girls to find amateur matches, which is great. But back then, it was very difficult. So it was it was pretty much like the path that I had. If I wanted to fight, that's what was there for me. When you think about you know starting in this game back as a pro back in 2012, and to where. Uh, you know, mixed martial arts is for women right now here in 2016. What what's the how, how, what do you see the biggest differences? Is it just simply uh, the fact that more people are embracing women's MMA as opposed to maybe they were back in 2012? Yeah, it's definitely become more mainstream. I mean, obviously, um, the UFC opening up women's divisions made a huge impact, and just Invicta, the fact that Invicta exists and it's providing this platform for women has been huge. Um, it's just there's more opportunities and there's definitely more girls getting involved. Even when I started, I mean, I, I was very reluctant, honestly, to fight in MMA because it, it seemed very masculine and kind of, I, I don't know, it just seemed very unappealing to me. Um, but then when I started doing it, I, I realized it was fun, but I still didn't really like the image that was associated with it. And I feel like that's changing. And, of course, the fight come up here, Invicta FC 18, which is going to be uh, July the 29th in Kansas City. Of course, an event that will be extreme exclusively on UFCFightPass.com, taking on Megan Anderson. She is 6-2 and two in her career after uh, losing her Invicta debut. She's won back-to-back fights. Uh, you know, when you look at, at Megan, first off, what, what are some of the things that jump out to you about her game? She's obviously a very good striker. She, it looks like she hits very hard. Um, watching her fights, it's easy to, I think, underestimate her. I'm good friends with Amanda Bell, who fought her last, and she didn't, like, just looking at, just watching her, it doesn't look like she hits that hard. But then you see she hit Amanda with that stiff jab, and Amanda just, like, almost crumbled. So I think she's definitely a good power striker. Um, I mean, she's a good athlete and a good fighter. 
did you reach out to Amanda and, and kind of maybe try to pick her brain at all about, you know, kind of, you know, what they were, were thinking about doing in that fight? Or is it you kind of just, you, you just don't go that route? A little bit, but the thing is, Amanda got hit really early. She got hit hard and she was fighting in a fog through most of it. So there, she, like, I mean, she remembers it, but it's hazy. And when you're fighting in a fog like that, it's really hard to gauge things like your opponent's strength. And like, everything seems like it's much harder than it maybe is. So, I mean, she couldn't really provide like a like a very good gauge when you're preparing for a fight are do you like to sit in front of you know whether it's a computer or the television and watch tape of your opponent or do you allow your coaches to do that and let them then let them feed you the information in the past i've pretty much let my coaches feed me the information um this fight i have actually watched megan's fight and i think part of it is that confidence in the past i would i think i would feel more nervous and i would almost like not want to know. Um, mm-hmm. I just want to do the blind trust. And now I'm like, I feel more confident. I feel more sure of myself. Like I feel like I can handle myself in whatever situation there is. So yeah, I have been watching and my coaches watch too. So. And of course, uh, you know, looking at the 145 pound division in Victor, we, we all know, you know, cyborg is a champion there. Um, you know, and, you know, Megan has talked about, you know, looking for, you know, that, that title fight. I mean, are, are you, are you at all viewing yourself as, you know, I think this is a number one contenders matchup or, or are you sitting there going, I'm not really worried about that. I'm just worried about Megan and, and I worry about uh, yeah. everything I'm after the fact. I'm about Megan and I mean, no matter what, let's say I finish her, it's an easy finish. Um, I still, I don't think I would have earned that title shot. I don't think I'd be ready for it. I still want a couple more matches. And I think my coaching staff would agree that the other matches are at least before going into Cyborg. Is part of that, that, that thought process just merely as you've, um, you know, with, you know, how many years you've been in this sport understanding that, you know, cause sometimes, sometimes you hear fighters, it, it seems like there is a rush, you know, there's that rush to get yeah. to the title fight. Is it kind of just because of how long you've been in that game, you, you just, you understand now of like, look, there, there is no reason to rush that in there. You want to make sure, um, you know, it's, it's the right time, right place for everything. Yeah. I mean, I think that's part of it. And I think also it's just like, I've gained the ability to be like realistic about myself and about my abilities. Um, and I, I don't, like, it doesn't bother me to say, Hey, that person's a lot better than me right now. Like that's not a good fight for me yet. And like, it's not like, it doesn't say anything bad about me. It just says I have these things to work on. Like, I think it's kind of like you, when you are in the sport long enough, you start to lose your ego a little bit. Is it one of those things where, you know, maybe one of the best traits that you have to have yourself as a fighter is just being brutally honest with yourself? I, I, I think it's really important. And I think the ability to be able to hear your coaches criticize you without wanting to argue with them and not wanting to explain to them, that, no, no, you like you really aren't as bad as they see. Like, you know, like, I, I don't know if you, you done jujitsu and all that stuff or you will teach a, a white belt something or mm-hmm. correct them on something and they'll immediately come back at you with, well, I usually do it that way. It's just because you looked at me and then if you progress, there comes a point where somebody corrects you and you're thankful that they saw that mistake um, rather than feeling like you're being personally attacked or being corrected. I think everyone can kind of, you know, maybe it's someone in your job, you know, you, you, you start on a job and uh, someone who's been around trying to tell you how to do the job, and may, you necessarily don't want to, don't want to listen to them. But I, I definitely understand uh, where you're coming from there. But you know, in terms of how do you see this fight uh, unfolding? I mean, do you see? Is it one of those things of obviously? I know you're not going to give away your game plan, but uh, <laughs> you know. Um, but do you, is it one of those things where are you a type of fire that you visualize it going a, a lot of different ways? Because you know, some fighters will say you can't visualize one way because all of a sudden one punch can totally change that the way you visualized everything. I, don't, I honestly don't think it's bad for that one punch to change things. I think for me personally, like I, I like to have a game plan and what it changes my fine. It's, it's the moment of getting into the cage. I need that confidence when I step in that this is going to work. And if it changes, it changes. I can adapt. I think like I do visualize like probably a few different things, but like I keep them consistent. It'll be like three different paths to victory. And of course, this fight's going to be a part of Invicta FC 18 coming up on July the 29th from the Scottish, the uh, Kansas City Scottish Rite Temple in Kansas City, Missouri. Of course, an event that you can watch live on UFCFightPass.com. Peggy, as always, appreciate time and good luck in the fight. Thank you very much. Pleasure to talk to you.